Okay, so we start to introduce uh, a little bit the the topic of today, and uh, um, so we 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 can start. Okay. All right. So let me share. Let me share my screen. Okay. Now we we can start about the, okay, hi everyone. So I'm Ferdinando. Um, we, we should have also Toby Cotton. Toby, do you hear us? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, I don't know why he's showing another person name, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to see why, but okay, so. Okay, um, uh, so thank you everyone. Um, and uh, we, are, um, we, we are starting with this, this new webinar, you know, how to perform railway monitoring with uh, our move solutions gear. And uh, today we have me, Ferdinando, and we have Toby, Toby Cotton, who is uh, the UK, UK sales director um, Toby is uh, running uh, all the sale operation in UK, um, and since there are a lot of people from uh, uh, the UK market, we thought they could be interested to use, you know have a talk about uh, what we do in UK, what there are the needs. All right. Okay. So now we can start. All right. Okay. Again, um, if we speak about uh, you know bridges railways, tunnels, dams, um, all these kinds of big uh, infrastructure. Um, from our side, we think that there is uh, only one need and uh, the need uh, is, uh, is about um, uh, safety. Safety is the most important thing that we have, um, uh, that, that, that we have here and uh, we think it's uh, really, really important that uh, the infrastructure owner, the infrastructure uh, uh, owner who owns the, uh, the, the structures and uh, who owns the, um, uh, the basically the, you know, the hand needs to handle the infrastructure, it needs to handle the structure, uh, can do a, a great job regarding safety. Safety, it's really what we care about that. And uh, we, we expect that the, the, the owners or who handle the structure do a great job with that. Um, so the, the goal in MOVE is to make uh, structures safer, safer than ever, ever before. Um, last time we have spoken about, you know, the Morandi Bridge, um, we've spoken about um, how to perform a dynamic monitoring. Um, Today we are making a, a huge focus on uh, on railway. Um, uh, railways is, uh, is extremely interesting. Uh, it's extremely hard. It's a uh, it's a tough market. Uh, the owner of uh, of the infrastructure needs to uh, understand and needs to um, have an idea not only on uh, let's say the not only about the track, but needs to have a, uh, an interesting idea also on, uh, on, uh, on the structure as well. So this is means that they don't need to only needs to check on the, let's say the railways track, but they need so also to check on what is happening actually with the, with the structural integrity on, uh, on where the, the bridge uh, on where the train is, is passing through. So that makes, probably a real complicated market than, uh, than uh, for example, uh, other kind of markets. Because also, if you think about it, when, uh, uh, you know, bridges, um, trains are, have a huge mass. So when they hit, for example, uh, a structure, a bridge, um, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, basically, um, the, that kind of mass, Will you know participate in a certain way to the structural behavior of uh, of the bridge, uh, which is passing, which on uh, the train that is passing through. So 
this is mean that basically the in this case the railway owner needs uh, again to understand the track which have a kind of behavior for uh, the ballast and then we got the structure so that makes probably really harder than uh, than other than the, than other uh um then the other market to uh you know understand and get into what is actually happening with uh uh with this uh, uh with this kind of structure that uh that, that is that for the railway industry so speaking about speaking about the problems okay again we said so the, I'm seeing the market that there are companies that focus, for example, only on the railway track or they focus on uh, the infrastructure. Not, not seeing, uh, um, I'm not seeing a lot of people that are focusing on both. We need to understand that um, for, for what we think is that the owner needs to, needs to uh, let's say, watch needs to understand the track and needs to understand the structure as well both of that it's not something that uh, um, we cannot uh, we not we cannot take uh, uh, we cannot take it on I mean they the, the, the railway track can bring to some failure if uh, the railway track is not monitored is not overseen and again the infrastructure if there is if it, if it is not overseen, it can cause problem as well. So we think that those two elements needs to be controlled and that having the same amount, uh, let's say of uh, investment to be done because they are both important. Cause then I show you what happened. Um, the, you know, if uh, someone asks what I should on, what I sh should I focus on? Uh, do I focus on the uh, railway track? What happened? Well, if you don't focus on the railway track, you get those kind of of, uh, of failure where the train can der derail and uh, uh, from the the railway track, and that create uh, cause uh, huge uh, huge problems. But again, if I don't focus on uh, the infrastructure it causes another kind of problems. So you can understand uh, that those, those two things are extremely, extremely connected. Um, it's a really extremely connected. Uh, um, we, uh, I, I think that uh, we cannot watch one and uh, not watching the other. I think that we need to take in control of both because both part is an, an actual an actual infrastructure. Okay, um, I don't know if uh, Toby are you there? Um, can yes, you... yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. Uh, do you want to talk about a little bit more about the UK environment? Um, what uh, what you guys have there? Uh, what is uh, what you think it's uh, interesting that is happening in the market? Definitely. I think just just to add some um, context to the scale, which uh, I'm sure most of you will will already be aware of, but just just to quote some figures. So you're currently looking at a, a UK infrastructure that costs around two billion pounds a year just for maintenance. Um, and then we've got the additional investment. So uh, just uh, very recently announced another 400 uh, million of investment in upgrades to lines and, and the recent completion 1.5 billion of the Midlands main line. So we're not talking about small amounts of money. It's, it's enormous investments that are put into this infrastructure. Um, what's really interesting is, is looking at what are some of the factors that, that um, are impacting, it's certainly in the UK, but this will be relevant on a global scale as well. Um, from the Met Office, they're highlighting that, that climate change is continuing to change. It's getting wetter in the winter, it's getting drier in the summer. And what's really interesting is in, in Networks Rail uh, annual report for last year, they highlight that climate change is one of the major risks to management of their infrastructure, both with regards to the, the lines themselves and the, and the structures. Um, what I found really interesting from, from the UK was their assessment of that risk management. Um, and Network Rail state that the management of the, the climate impact, so a, an element that is completely out of their control, 
um, is category A rated, so the highest risk rating for them, um, and that their current risk management of that is unsatisfactory. So we've got a, a, an aging infrastructure in the UK that is, is getting a significant investment in terms of upgrades and new line investments and an incredibly expensive infrastructure um, to, to maintain annually. But we're seeing that incidents are occurring. Um, very recently, we've had in, in last year, we had the Stonehaven derailment. Um, and in 2016, we had a, a derailment in Watford, both due to landslides. So these are both due to not maintenance failures, but factors outside of, of control of network rail and, and of the, the service management. Um, and I think that's really important, not just for the UK, but on a global scale, is that, is that we're, we're seeing failures of structures, as we've seen very recently in North America, but also we're seeing factors that are outside of the control of both the, the rail owners and the service providers. And so it's really important to understand what is going on with that infrastructure so that we can be aware of those changes and, and not at the point that it happens, but we can understand the likelihood and the prediction of these happening as well. Right, right. So uh, I think that that's a huge point, what, what you're saying that, um, uh, that I, I'm seeing this in, in, in Italy as well, um, uh, especially regarding infrastructure. So the bridges that the, the train pass you know, uh, think um, how much of mass, how, ma how, mu how much mass the, a train weigh, and all the time that it hit the structure, uh, it caused, you know, forces that are, 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 let's say, pushing and, you know, aging our structure. So the infrastructure owner in this case as a, you know, network rail, or in Italy, we, we have a, uh, Ferrovie dello Stato, that, that basically means uh, uh, railways of Italian state, for example, needs to be in control of, you know, what is aging and how the, you know, the ordinary, ordinary uh, train that are passing are aging our infrastructure. So that's, you know, that, that's a point. So we cannot, um, just watch one part of the problem we need to combine both together in a, and give a, a one solution to our to our owner which needs to handle both part so let's go to the questions again we we love answering questions so so again we we want a method that you know target for our uh, owner uh, methodology to understand uh, what infrastructure, what structure needs the investment now, needs to go now under investment. We want methodology. We want to be sure that the money that, uh, that we pay, that we are investing now go to the most critical infrastructure that the owner has. That's the first part. Second part is, how can I understand if my structure change uh, its behavior? That's another in, in important point because we want a method that, again, not only give us, a, let's say, a zero offset, let's say, uh, what that's, it's the status now, but we want, we want to be able to control the change in, in the structural behavior. So that's the important, important point. And I want to start speaking about railway, railway track. I want to be able to monitor the cunt, the twist, and perform ballast void detection. That's another, that's our point that are really important for the reason that we seen previously, number one. If we don't want the, for example, the train get derailed from the from uh, the railway. So um, ballast void de detection really important counter twist really important as well so um you might know you might know from uh you know previous uh, uh webinar or you may always have uh, talked to us that we are a real fan about dynamic monitoring um i think that dynamic monitoring is about to predicting you know failure before it happens i mean the target of every kind of monitoring, it's that. But you know, we we think that on uh, on dynamic monitoring, there are certain way that can speed up 
this kind of process on predicting a state or understanding something is going into a state where it's getting dangerous for the structure. Okay, so what is dynamic monitoring about? Um, that's an uh, uh, interesting question because, uh, um, you know, we speak about what is means dynamic, what it is. Basically, um, vibrations is what is about dynamic monitoring. Um, so a vibration, it's something that uh, it happened really fast. So, you know, it's a, sh a shake maybe in a, in a you, you can see it, you can, you can feel it as a shake in the, in the, in the structure. And basically uh, vibration can tell you a lot of things. Thinks about, for example, the frequency of a beam, right? If you have a beam and you shorter the beam, the frequency, it will be different. If you crack the beam, how the basically vibration, um, let's say pass through the beam, it will be different. So you can understand that dynamic, let's say catching this dynamic behavior, this vibrational behave, behavior, uh, we can understand what, you know, um, um, you can, let's say, get a fingerprint of the structure. So you can, let's say, trying to catch um, if those kind of vibrations are changing, that means that probably at the geometrical scale, so geometrically, your structure is changing. So that's really powerful because that means that if I observe that my, let's say, vibrations are changing, and not only let's say vibration, but parameters that I can extrapolate from vibration are changing, that means that something is changing. And it get really powerful because uh, you know, we are able to understand the, those kind of changes. Um, why dynamic monitoring is interesting. So, because as I said, those parameters can have a representation in, uh, let's say, in the geometrical spectrum. Um, it ha you can use it to tune finite element model. So you can, uh, let's say, perform finite element model and uh, use to um, perform and tune your uh, uh, your model. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a really interesting thing. You can use these be these um, let's say uh, parameters to track anomaly behavior so you can track the behavior of uh, of this kind of uh, parameter and see when it change and uh, last but not least um, the idea it, it would be to calculate the change in stiffness and um, basically the stiffness is one of the most important parameter of uh, a, a structure and infrastructure. So we want to be able to capture, to understand if we have a change in stiffness. If we have a change in stiffness, that means that basically probably something's not, well, it's, something's going not, not good, okay? So uh, why dynamic monitoring is hard? Um, dynamic monitoring is hard for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of this is uh, that we need to sample a high frequency. So sampling a high frequency is it means that it's it, it, it can be not let's say low power to perform that. So that means that we need we need to sample something continuously at a high frequency, and uh, it's uh, it can be hard to maintain the battery. For example, um, we want it wireless, but you know to transmit uh, everything wireless, uh, it's uh, complicated again to transmit dynamic data. Um, we need to, to, to send a lot of data because we are sampling a high frequency. That, so that means that you have, for example, uh, if you sample a hundred Hertz for one second, that means that you have a hundred samples and uh, those samples have a size in, uh, in beats, for example. So you can understand that uh, transfer this information on wireless, it gets complicated. And then to perform synchronization sampling, that's what you need for in order to perform uh, dynamic monitoring, let's say uh, analysis, you need to be synchronized as 10 
microseconds, 50 microseconds top. So this is, means that it's really hard to make it this, everything this on wireless, okay? So that's why dynamic monitoring, it wasn't uh, really a thing from, let's say two years, three years ago, three years ago, because there were, there were all these problems and we needed accelerometer that are connected uh, by a cable, um, a power system, which power up the system, something to collect all the things. And that's get really messy, really complicated for the owners, really co complicated for the su surveyor, which needs to go there and uh, perform this kind of, uh, of monitoring, okay? So another thing is that once you got all this data, you need to elaborate the data, right? You need to elaborate these things. You need to uh, understand when vibration change. You need to understand the frequency. You need to extrapolate the geometrical parameters and that's get complicated, okay? So what we, knew, what we do is actually combine dynamic monitoring, static monitoring, complex algorithms, and everything is made completely wireless in a unique and the easy solution for the customer um, that uh, it makes perform all this dynamic monitoring, static monitoring, algorithms all together to make you know monitoring really easy again. So that is uh, that is what 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 we're doing right now and uh, what we we want to do, what we want to do. Um, it's make everything this every every everything really easy. Um, okay, so now we're going to get more in depth. And of course, since uh, um, it's, uh, we're speaking about railway, um, besides, uh, uh, behind, we know, I don't want to show you all of our product, but I want to show you how our product is used in order to uh, perform the uh, dynamic uh, dynamic monitoring, okay? Dynamic monitoring for the railways uh, the, and for the railways industry and how to perform uh, those kind of monitoring for uh, also other things. So I'm going to get more in the application now, okay? So a basic idea of how the system will work is we got all the sensors that are uh, standalone. Um, they communicated the data over LoRaWAN and that uh, they are on field. And then by a gateway, which uh, you know can be can cover a lot of radius on uh, uh, on um, communication as a communication system, um, so it can it, it can communicate with uh, the sensors at long range. Okay, uh, they they exchange information back and forth between the sensors and between the cloud. So the gateway collect basically the data, collect the information, and send it through. Um, the the uh, the uh, to the to the cloud, okay. Where we have all the move servers. This means that basically there are the processing units, database, and other things. And you can see the data, or on uh, on cloud, let's say on our platform, or you can get the data with FTP, MQTT, an API connector, okay? So this is make it really practical to you get information that we handle all the, problem, all the problems with you. Now, um, that's a, a thing that I like to cover. You'll think, okay, I don't wanna go with uh, your move system. I want to have a private one. We can actually place a private server just for you, for example, uh, that, it's going to be on your uh, infrastructure, uh, on your IT systems. So um, we can do that also. We can create a, let's say, custom, a private one uh, for customer that needs, uh, uh, that are really complex. So they need uh, a, let's say, own kind of separate infrastructure that doesn't go in cloud, you know, certain things. Um, by the way, the cloud is really, really used. A lot of, uh, of our customer uh, loves it because it's easy. It's easier to set up everything. Basically, we we take care of the processing. We take care of everything. Um, what what we're doing uh, uh, as a company is we design the the sensors. So we design the wireless sensors, and uh, we design the algorithms, the data analysis that is behind. Uh, 
uh, those kind of product and uh, we give you the basically and uh, uh, we give an, an end solution. So we, we take care of these, uh, 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 let's say, hard uh, and complex, uh, you know, um, things uh, that you need to do as a des to design, to handle data. We, we think uh, we, our goal is to design and make everything easier for you. So you don't have to think about that. Um, speaking about the LoRaWAN system, LoRaWAN, it's a nice wireless system which basically can communicate the data all over a wide, wide area, but at the same time have a long battery life up to, for example, eight years. Okay, so um, with, with that, uh, that means that you got a fast installation and uh, with low maintenance cost. And that's really important because we want to be able to uh, leave the sensors on track, on the, on the track, on the, on the bridge, under the bridge for a lot of times, two years, eight years, depending on, uh, on, the, on the kind of sensors. Now we get more in the technical part, we get more in the, I think, uh, what this webinar is about. So the application, so I am going to show you the product and that I'm going to show you how you can use this product in order to do the monitoring for the railway industry, okay? Um, so now we are going to cover first the most dynamic part, okay, of monitoring and then the, the static part, okay? So as I've said before, we think that it's important to monitor both parts. So the railway track, so the, the track on where the train is passing and the structure this is, that is underneath actually. So as you can see from the picture, um, I'm going to talk uh, about every single pieces. We got the, for example, uh, deck field meters um, on, uh, on, the, on the structure, but underneath, uh, as you can see on the, on the picture below, we got accelerometer on the bridge. And, and that's uh, the, the, the key, the interesting part is that, it, it, we we trying to give one only one solution, not to give different kind of solutions, right? The the owner needs to put everything together. So sensors, those kind of sensors can go both on the railway track or on the structure as well. Okay. So speaking about the deck, okay, the deck is one of the most innovative product that we have right now, and. Uh, um, there will be in the next future, a new version. We are working on many things, but let's speak about what, what it does, what, what, what we, how we use it, what we do with the deck. So the deck is an, an innovative uh, sensor because it measure dynamic displacement. So basically dynamic displacement is a vibration, okay? But we're not watching vibration and acceleration, okay, in the, in, the acceler in, a, in the acceleration domain, I'm seeing how vibration basically behave in the space. So um, if I want to see this movement, this is, uh, as you can see, uh, a vibration, no? my, my, uh, my hand is doing a vibration, that see this movement, it can tell you how much is going up and down basically, okay? So not, not hard on the deck to understand it, it's it captured this movement, okay. Um, so then, I, so that is about dynamic dynamic monitoring, pretty much, and uh, uh, is is it was created for a bridge to perform the to measure dynamic displacement uh, um, for the bridge, but we found out uh, likely that it can be used also for other kind of application, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, Talking about the performance, it has an extremely high accuracy in the uh, in the domain in the dynamic domain. So this means that uh, is able to catch uh, with a high accuracy dynamic uh, movement that the structure have. Okay, and uh, this is means that you can perform analysis both in frequency and in the let's say in the space time domain because for example i can see how a deflection is changing over time the dynamic deflection of course so i can track for example a peak to peak value just uh, make it an up okay i can uh, i can 
track the peak to peak value and see how this peak to peak value change over time. Of course, if this change over time, that means that there is something wrong with uh, what we are monitoring. Um, not, not nothing, it, re, it's, it doesn't get easier than that. Or I can use uh, the data, which are dynamic data and uh, use OMA, use output model analysis, use uh, frequency domain decomposition algorithms to extrapolate frequency and see, for example, how the bridge or how the structural behavior when a load is passing on it. So what kind of frequency is acting when, uh, when uh, uh, it's, I mean, what kind of uh, frequency is showing, sorry for my bad English, um, when, uh, when, when a load pass on, uh, on the structure, okay? Now, the interesting thing that uh, we have seen is that the deck can be used for ballast void detection. Think about it. The deck, basically deck is monitoring deflection, okay? So um, dynamic deflection. So it's good in all that case that something hit a, my structure, my rail, for example, my sleeper fast. So that, that's that exactly what DEC is, uh, is about. So it captures how fast it goes down and up and the, those kind of behavior. So that is good for perform ballast void detection because if I'm seeing that, let's say all the time, the, those kinds of oscillation, those kinds of impulse, let's say increase, I can have an idea that, uh, you know, something is not, is not going uh, good, something is, uh, is bad, okay? And uh, what about the, um, you know, you can use our tools that we have in the platform and see amplitude um, oscillation on the sleeper, and perform analysis to track that. So we we made it. We made some tools that is are, are really user friendly and uh, nice to actually use and really easy. Um, <clears throat> of course, the deck um, is made also for infrastructure and structure. So for the bridge, for you know dams, other things. But uh, we can place on the structure as well to monitor the dynamic behavior. So I'm saying, for example, the bridge where the train is passing, the accelerometer. So the accelerometer is uh, a really innovative uh, thing that we have designed because it has a synchronization sampling. So that synchronization sampling enable you to perform all kind of uh, uh, model analysis that you need uh, for the uh, for the the bridge or the what kind of whatever structure you want. Um, we have. Um, accelerometer that do this on the Colosseum in Rome. Um, we have a, a, in a different place. So, you, you know, we are speaking about railway monitoring, but you can use it for many different things, not only for the, um, for, for the track or uh, the structural monitoring for uh, the bridge and, uh, you know, uh, for, all, for other applications as well. Um, now, the, let me show you what, what, what we can do. We, we can measure by putting the accelerometer and performing synchronization sampling in a, in a, let's say there is more than that, but I'm not, I don't want to get too technical. Um, we can see the model shape and the model shape is uh, how vibration is passing through the bridge. And that's, uh, that's that fingerprint that I was talking before because with that I can understand the frequency, I can understand uh, uh, how this uh, shape is along the the my my structure, my bridge, and that that could be used uh, um, for that could be used uh, uh, for um, actual uh, as a track uh, to tracking the anomaly behavior of uh, of a bridge of my structure. Okay. Um, then we have the tilt, the triaxial tilt. So triaxial tilt is a lot used, is a known product. Um, our has a huge accuracy on um, small rotation. So you can get 
a plus minus 0 0.001 degree of accuracy on a small rotation is plus minus 90 degrees. So it's a, it's a really, really small product. So you can use it for doing a lot of things. So on the railway track, you can use to perform um, cunt, twist, vertical deflection. So uh, you, can, you can place it on the sleeper or you can, per, you can place it on a tilt beam between sleepers to see the deflection that have uh, the, the track, okay? Um, basically the tilt beam, but basically the tilt meter can measure the pitch and roll angle with a, you know, a, a tremendous accuracy. Um, we have tools to perform the cunt, for example. So um, that is requested from uh, Neho Rail, uh, from, uh, uh, you know, a different kind of, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, infrastructure railway owner uh, around the world, okay? So uh, we have tools that automatically perform with, uh, uh, perform those kind of measuring with, uh, the, with the, the tilt. And uh, we have, for example, the cat, usually cant and twist is a really interesting. So the, we have another tool to perform the twist measuring, okay? So as you can understand, uh, we tend to give one solution uh, that with, uh, that you can perform structural integrity and uh, railway track integrity. Another thing uh, really interesting is that by placing different tilt beams by catching right the the, the deflections uh, the, the the angle and knowing the length you can measure a certain basically vert vertical deflection that is having the uh, the railway track if I watch in a, in a, in some direction and I can I, I can and that's out again already made it automatical with uh, our tool, okay, to measure those kind of, uh, of to, to, do, to perform this kind of uh, measuring. Then we have the analog and digital nodes. Um, those kind of uh, uh, loggers, let's call it like that, they can connect different kind of geotechnical probes uh, from uh, uh, 420 milliampere millivolt over volt uh, to um, put a uh, pot, uh, pod sensor, NTC and PTC, uh, or having the digital nodes read also the mode bus, mode bus sensors. So uh, it reads digital probes, um, which uh, I have on digital interfaces. And uh, the technical sensors are really interesting for the, for the monitoring for the railways, because I can see uh, the, um, I can place, for example, an inc an inclinometer chain uh, in uh, in the in the ground to see if I have a, 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 a you know if something gets if the the the, the ground gets gets slip basically if uh, uh, if I have those kind of uh, of uh, um, of problems. So um, you know, it's uh, uh, digital probes are really interesting and the reading that help the the understanding uh, of uh, of my track and uh, um, of the of course the the structural behavior. And then the lower one gateway, which have uh, LTE connection, have Ethernet, um, so it can easily communicate uh, with uh, uh, the the radio system that the radio system or by cable uh, as you want to the cloud, okay? Um, the regarding, uh, uh, let's go one second to the platform. Uh, as I, I, I've shown you uh, before, um, the platform uh, basically it's designed to have uh, inside a lot of tools, a lot of algorithms, which um, inside there are uh, tools that help you to calculate faster and extrapolate information, both from dynamic monitoring and from static monitoring as well. So um, let's say we want to perform an FFT. Um, we might need an FFT, which is a, an easier, it's, a, it's an easier, uh, let's say, algorithms than other, okay? 
Um, so um, it's important. It's a uh, uh, it's important that the surveyor the uh, who who watch every day our structure have all these kind of tools and uh, uh, have the power to make the analysis. And that is what, uh, th that is the idea of uh, uh, our platform. The idea of our platform is uh, to give the power to everyone to perform um, complex, complex analysis, okay? Uh, and of course, uh, uh, to make things automatical. So on the platform, you can find statistical analysis tools, for example, FDD, uh, Frequency Domain Decomposition, which is um, techniques from uh, the output model analysis. Um, we got statistical uh, density function analysis. So we calculate uh, the density probability function of your phenomenal. We got the FFT, which is a mo more basic, but it, it's a, it's used a lot and uh, it's useful to have it for an to perform and to understand every event that I have from uh, my dynamic system, okay? Um, there are tools that help you to check faster, faster those kind of parameters. For example, our FDD, the OMA tools have a track, have a track fre frequency tracking um, tools, which basically uh, every day it plots you the the frequency of your structure, the frequencies. So because probably you're going to have multiple frequencies, um, and uh, you can track it and see if this is changing means that something is changing in your structure. So as you can see, there is a lot of power in this kind of analysis, a lot of power. Um, this is our statistical distribution analysis are made for uh, ch seeing change in the distribution of our uh, of the of the system. So of the of, of the phenomenon that I'm, that I'm, uh, I'm watching. So again, really helpful to understand if something is actually changed in in our structure. And then we have those this tool, for example, is the bridge static deflection tools, which help you to uh, evaluate uh, doing a load test with, a, with just tilt. So you can do a load test uh, uh, on a bridge with just tilt. What is the deflection of the bridge in that moment? Because it, uh, it, there's a one button you can, that you can click and it gives you the live mode. So you can see in basically real time, the deflection that the, the bridge is having during a load test. So this is a really, really, really interesting uh, uh, application that, uh, um, that with uh, these kind of tools you can do. And of course, uh, we had the railway tools, which are, which are uh, specially designed, uh, specifically designed for uh, the railway track behavior. Okay, so um, with the railway tools, you can, for example, design your own track and uh, perform um, automatically the cant, the twist, uh, the deflection that, as I've shown you before with the tilt meters or uh, the ballast void detection with the deck, uh, you know. So these tools help you to uh, get faster, to fasten up your monitoring. Um, and we have, a you know, tons of graph, we have a lot of stuff. Um, regarding, uh, regarding more um, the, uh, the, the structure of how to use uh, uh, the architecture, let's say, or how to use uh, uh, our platform. Um, the platform is open. That means that basically um, we, um, you can have the connector that you want to connect to, to our platform and to extrapolate information, API, MQTT, FTP, uh, which uh, are common uh, connectors uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, uh, that with that easily, you can create uh, your own platform. You can use, uh, you can extrapolate this data and catch uh, you know, use our tools, our algorithms, uh, 
and uh, to provide to your cast, cast uh, to your customer a uh, new experience. So we don't want that uh, you are forced to use and to show our our platform. You can use uh, you can show your platform, and we are we love that. We are really happy with that. Um, the the platform uh, in this case uh, uh, needs uh, uh, help you to speed up to create. Uh, let's say your tools, your visualization um, for the customer. And uh, that's the, the most power thing that we love to see. We love to see that on the top of our system, there are uh, other companies that build their own uh, business on top of that. And that's uh, incredibly, really interesting. Um, another thing, as I said before, is that if you don't want to use a cloud, let's say, you can use a, we can build for you a private architecture, which basically is your, uh, it's handled by us. So we help you, for example, to, um, we install it, we think about maintenance, but basically it's owned by you. Um, and uh, that is a really powerful thing that we can do. Or we could do also an on-premise thing where we give you the license and so you install it to, uh, your uh, your system uh, to your own uh, own system. Okay, we are toward the end, but I would say that um, I really enjoyed the, uh, this hour with you guys. Um, I will uh, exchange the recording so you can see uh, the record from uh, uh, our uh, our side, and um, you can rewatch it. But if you have any question commercially or technically question, te technical question, please uh, just send us an email. It would be great to, uh, you know, have an idea uh, of what you're looking for. Uh, we'd love to have a chat. Um, we will be 100% uh, with uh, your, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a, a nice time talking, okay? And uh, of course, if you are in Italy, you're welcome to, come and meet us of course in a, in a safe uh, in a safe way uh, but you know uh, you'll be our guest so uh, we're looking forward to you to uh, to know you more and, uh, and see you okay so uh, have a, uh, have a, a great day and uh, and uh, we'll talk uh, I'm sure that uh, I, I heard I will hear from uh, you guys uh, soon bye thank you stay safe.